Welcome back to Very Train, guys. Thanks for taking your time out of your day to watch my video. Let's talk some Ozark Division BFL Super Tournament at Lake of the Ozarks. Guys, this is my rookie season. I've never really fished before in a tournament before this season um, and uh, didn't do to so good on the first one because I didn't know what to expect. That was at Table Rock. I couldn't fish the second event. So coming into this event, um, I actually did pretty good at Truman with uh, Brent Chapman, and I did okay at Table Rock the second time with Mike Webb, and both of those guys were awesome. Uh, I couldn't ask for better boaters. Even my first boater, Kevin, was was good too. Um, so come in to Lake of the Ozark Super Tournament in 108th. I don't know if I can do well enough to make it to regionals, but we're going to try, and we actually do okay, to be honest with you. I, I, uh, I, I want to show you the footage. Uh, to, so, so to set this tournament up, um, we were a little late getting over to PB2. Uh, my boater who I draw, drew, David Morgsdorf, was actually from my hometown in Jefferson County, or close to, very close to, um, so that was cool, uh, but he was really laid back and calm, an older gentleman, and we didn't actually get all over to PB2. We went by water from Pahatsi, Pahatsi Boat Ramp, which is around the point. It's not very far, and when we got over there, everybody was looking at us. It was like 645, and we still haven't checked in and got our little buoy yet, and I was like, oh my gosh, I just felt a lot of pressure, and, and I'm a really punctual person usually, and so it was really getting to me, but long story short, we made it. I didn't know how I was going to feel about David all day, um, but uh, we took off. We, we made it, and we started doing some top water. We took off straight across PB2, or from PB2 across the lake, and did some top water. I wasn't feeling it, so I switched over to a square bill, started catching some fish, but you could see they're, they're not very big. All right, David, we need to do better than these. I actually forgot to mention our boat was selected for the drawing at every tournament. They do a drawing for, you know, some sort of gift. This was a Ducket Paradigm Reel, so it was like a really good start to the morning. Uh, so we were guaranteed that it was $180 value. So I was into that. Um, and, uh, hopefully it was a sign from Jesus because, well, <clears throat> I needed all the help I could get. Anyway, we left, uh, the Grand Glaze Bridge, uh, cause we were doing some top water there and, uh, we went up the glaze a little bit and David knows the lake pretty well. We went to start fishing, uh, some underwater brush piles and, um, he elected to do a Carolina rig and uh, just like a crawl, like an old school crawl with like the real pinchers on them, not like the, you know, the wings, I guess. Um, and uh, we started to have some success there. <clears throat> we'll see. We'll get something different between us here and see if we can get something working. This is a DT-16, but I don't think I get down to 16. Be close, though. You going? I was way out there. Uh -oh. Where are you at, David? Right here. Oh, that's a great fish, buddy. Good job. Thank you. Great fish, dude. Thank you. Good? We're good. Oh. 
So about after that, I realized that I should probably put away the crankbait and slow move something through these brush piles. I switched to my confidence bait. It is a shaky head with the Netbait T-Mac. It's a seven or eight inch uh, trick worm. Uh, it's a confidence bait of mine, and I knew that if I could hit these brush piles, that I had a really good chance of, of getting bit, and uh, it proved to uh, work out pretty well. I got a fish on, didn't even know it. Oh. Might be on the board here. Maybe. Don't, 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 don't fall in. Thanks, buddy. Good fish. Fish number one. Yeah, so sweet, nine o'clock, we both have a fish. We stick around, grab another one that was a short, and then we decide to go flip docks all day. Um, and he had practiced all week. A lot of people have practiced. There's 182 boats in this tournament. There's other tournaments going on. Everybody was practicing the week prior. Come Saturday, those bites um, weren't as strong as the middle of the week because these fish were super pressured and these docks, even though there's 25,000 of these docks on Lake of the Ozarks, it, they were just being hammered and pressured and, and it was really hard to get a bite. Uh, one thing I did notice and one thing one of the winners had told us that I had heard them say was the key was swimming your, your jig, your worm, or your brush hog around the docks a little shallower instead of dragging them. And I also had noticed, you know, if I was casting as soon as it hit the water, eh, it would get bit. Or if I was taking my lure out of the water, I was getting bit. But these were still shorts, and we did that for hours. Oh, I got hit on the drop. I don't, I don't know if he'll keep. While I was catching this fish, uh, David had stepped on his rod there, and uh, he broke it. And that was kind of the beginning of a really bad day for David. Um, you won't see it, but he lost a rod while running because the water was crazy. And... Um, he had a little bit of a boat damage from his trolling motor because the water was so crazy. Uh, but he stayed positive. Um, and, uh, as the day went on, I actually really started to enjoy <laughs> David. And, and by the end of it, we were, I felt that we were pretty close and I really enjoyed the time with him. So we kept flipping and flipping, um, docks and, uh, catching short after short. I almost lost my rod here on this one. Uh, but then we decided to run back to where we started the day at and watch some of this water. It is just crazy out there how rough it is. As you can see, we have to stay behind another boat just to avoid the huge wakes being put out by some of these boats. And uh, it's hard to stay on plane sometimes because you got to keep the speed up. But some of, like again, the wakes are just, uh, they, they're, they can trash your boat or, or really cause a lot of problems. <laughs> Big 
so we finally make it back there. We got an hour left, and I have one fish, about two and a half pounds. Within the last 30 minutes, I hook into a fish that's three plus pounds, which puts me at what I think is a five, about five and a half. And I know on the co-angler side, uh, that puts me close to the top 20%. Uh, that's all you really need on the co-angler side. However, my GoPro, it overheated and I didn't catch it. And uh, so we'll fast forward to the weigh-in and it overheated again, but you can see my two fish. And <clears throat> what we end up with um, for our weight is, five pounds five ounces and when i weighed in that put me at 22nd place and we're probably at the middle of the boats yet to weigh in so um top 36 make it and what do you know i got 33rd so on to day two and we're going to keep it short because these videos can get really long so here's day two Howdy, howdy. I do invest. So day two, I draw the 33rd place finisher on the boater side, Chris Larkins. Dude, this guy felt like he's been my friend my entire life. Um, I offered him some money for gas, didn't take it. First time that ever happened. Just a super nice guy. Heard me talk about investing. Uh, I invest in Bitcoin. We we're talking investing, and then we we take off, and we are gonna run back this morning top water bite. And Chris fishes down here all the time. He's also back from where I'm from, um, in Farmington, I believe, and uh, that's kind of close. And uh, just a super cool guy. And we turn it on super fast this morning and get off to. into the spot watch to the right of the screen chris is throwing an evergreen spook i am also throwing an evergreen spook it's what we used the day before so uh, we were just kind of doing that but watch as soon as i cast to the right he gets blown up on and then immediately look back to where i cast and we almost well, have a double uh, we'd been here for well, friday, 10 friday minutes was it was okay. okay i would say for us but there we go. Uh, yeah, but I don't know how big he is. Yeah, he's pulling pretty good. But I don't know. Is he keeping? Yes, he is. You're close. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate that. Yeah, I saw your blow up, and then I looked over mine, and it was gone. I got this net too, I like it. <laughs> right after my fish, his very next cast, he throws over to the dock to the right and hooks this wonderful fish. Okay, <laughs> that was it. There you go, brother. Where you at? Good fish. Wow, that's a great fish. That's four pounds, brother. That's a great fish. That's about the size of the one that missed one. You can be tough a little bit. No, let's sit him down the bottom. That's a good call. You got it? You good? Dude, they're killing everything on the top water quickly. I'm like, we can fill up like right now. So it's like within the first 30 minutes of even the tournament, and we both have keepers in there and we're getting bit. And uh, so we back out of that dock and we just kind of go around a couple docks. We come to a flat, still fishing top water, and here we go. Oh, hell no. 
That's probably every bit of four and a half. Oh, he just missed that. There it is. I've seen, it. I've seen the fish the first time. I just let that thing sit. Oh shit, he's a good one. Oh, holy shit. Come on, don't come off there. I mean, it's a big one. Sorry about that. Dude, yeah, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, damn. I've seen the fish. Holy. I'm gonna set it down here. I, I didn't think he'd come back for it. I didn't either. But you did the right thing, you didn't. Oh boy. Whoa, you're a big fish. Those are a lot of trouble hooks, man. Chill out. Landed this monster. He missed it on the first strike. I didn't move the bait and he came back and just hammered it, had it in. It was probably a five pound fish. Within 45 minutes, I got what seems to be six and a half pounds. And I'm feeling really good about day two here on the co-angler side. Um, my very next cast. Is this a spot you like, I suppose? Another one. Off that stump. Uh, he might keep, I don't know. Dude, come on now, chill out. That's awesome. That fish did not keep, by the way. It was short by a half inch. Uh, we opted after the sun started coming out to go flip shallow docks, and uh, that's where Chris really turned it on. And I caught some fish, uh, but not any keepers. He eventually filled out his bag. He had four, and then within the last 10 minutes, right around the point from PB2, he catches a small Kentucky on uh, a wave break with a worm. And so he finished out uh, his five bass limit and uh, away to the weigh in we go. Let's look at the legendary Dion Hibden's bag first because it was quite impressive. Yesterday he had 12, 15, today he ranks as five bass, a good bag of fish. Dion, you need 22, nine to get the lead from Matt and you're right there. This may scare him. What'd you catch him on? I caught them all on a Hipton's Hammer Jig. All right. It's going to be close. Not, maybe hardly close enough, but we're going to see. Nineteen pounds, fifteen ounces. Total weight's thirty-two pounds and fourteen ounces. Currently in second place. Thank you, sir. Boat number? 33. Huh? 33. 33, your name? Uh, Josh. Hey, Hinton, he does a boater yesterday, he had 16 pounds, eight ounces. Hold your bag open, sir. He does bring us a five bass in, paint it and the way this right here to get to it. A little bit shy, but you are going to get a good paycheck. 11 pounds and 11 ounces total. Who they weights? 28 pounds and 3 ounces. Peyton currently in fourth place. What'd you catch him on? All on a hammer jig. Joshua Ramsey, fish another co angler. Yesterday he had five four. Today he brings us two bass. And his two bass weight, six pounds and six ounces. Total weight's 1110. Currently in ninth place. What did you catch him on? Evergreen spoon. Evergreen spoon. all right so 11 pounds and some change it put me at ninth for the two day total actually day two exclusive weight i was in fourth among the top 36 co-anglers uh, i finished out 14th overall between the two days out of 182 and uh, it was a pretty nice check it paid for all of my entry fees for the year and uh, that means I got a lot of free lessons and made a lot of cool friends and learned a lot. Um, so next year, the first event is February 25th, I think, is what they have 
uh, listed at Table Rock. Going to be kind of cold. Oh, forgot to mention, it did not throw me into the regional. Um, I went from 108th coming into this event to 40, uh, I'm sorry, 71st. So I didn't make it. I can't help to think if I wouldn't have missed an event or blanked on my very first event that I might have made it. Guys, we are going to migrate over to very train hunting now and focus on a whitetail deer here in the Midwest. If that's your thing, come on over, subscribe, watch. Uh, got a great property and great people to share that adventure with you with. So thanks for watching, guys. I really much appreciate you. Have a good off season if that is your thing, and uh, we'll see you next year, okay? Bye-bye.